City Gun for me is one of the best guns in the Premier League. This is how it's called. A very, very, very big club with a lot of history. My hope for Nottingham Forest is just to get back to where they belong, which is the top. We're in your home. Nottingham has become your home, if I can say that. Since leaving Nigeria at 18, it feels like this is the first place that you're really settling in. So how would you say life here compares to life back in Nigeria? Oh, uh, well, uh, for me, yeah, in Nottingham, uh, it's big different. Uh, but the truth about life is, uh, like they always say, no place like home. For me, home will always be home. But this is what I love doing. This is what I've always wanted to do. And uh, I'm happy to be in Nottingham. When you think of Nigeria, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? <laughs> well, for me, uh, it's the culture, it's the, uh, the atmosphere, the, your parents, your family, uh, most especially your, your God's good friend, uh, you go up. It's just a mix of, mixture of everything for me, like the food and everything. And for anyone who's never been to Nigeria, how, how would you describe it? Like, if I had said one word, describe Nigeria, what would be the word you'd describe it with? <laughs> I would say uh, Nigeria, if you've never been there before and uh, the first time you went there, I would tell you welcome to the people that never give up. Oh, I like it. <laughs> I like that you also mentioned your family there when you think of home. Yeah. Is it your mum that introduced you to football? I read somewhere that she went to the market <laughs> one day and she came home with a football. Is that, is yeah, that how yeah, you remember yeah, it? Yeah, that was right though, because uh, she went to the market and uh, there is this small football, like uh, we used to call it in my, in a, in my dialect, felele. And so she went there and she, she bought it for me because I was just kicking everything out of <laughs> How did it then grow to, uh, I guess, a moment where you thought, OK, this is something that I, I want to be involved in, I want to play. Yeah, for me, like, that moment, like, uh, growing up, my mom and my, my mom just said to me, you love to kick everything. <laughs> and that's the truth, because when I go up, going to the nursery, I just, if I'm walking, I'm kicking the stones, everything. So I like to play on the street as well. And uh, my brother also is really a good goalkeeper. Obviously, my dad don't wanted me to play because he wanted me to go to, to school. So I always play on the street and uh, many older brothers would tell me, oh Taiwo, you're very good. So as time goes on, I just fell in love with football and one day I just walk up to, to a, a secondary school close by to my home and I see a lot of lads playing football. I'm like, ha, ah, I can't. I thought it was just like a normal street football that we played. So I walk up to them and the coach said to me, no, uh, you cannot just join <laughs> us and play. For you to join us, you need to tell your parents, you need to uh, register through a form. And I went back home and I said to my parents, I found some young people playing football there. And they said, it's okay. At that point, my dad already accepted me playing football. And that's how it all started for me. I feel like it's a pattern you see in, in African families that, you know, you want your kids to do better than you did. So they feel that the traditional route is go to school, go to university and then get uh, a safe job, yeah. be it in the medical yeah. um, world or maybe in the legal field. Yeah. So how did you convince him? I think uh, my twin sister did really a huge part in that because when we're in the nursery school, uh, she will be the one to look out for me if my dad is not at home. And so I have to sneak outside to play. So uh, it gets to a point like, then we're just playing on the street. And we are into a final, like a street final. My brother is there. My brother always said to him, let him, because every guy in the street want him to be there. So that day we thought he went to, to the work, but he never lived early. So he was just sitting there. And everyone was like, <laughs> he has a final, he needs to play. <laughs> there is no way I can go out of the house. So, and normally street football like is close to our house. So a lot of boys just rush to the house, like, we need Taiwo out of the house. Then he was like, kind of surprised, what's happening? <laughs> so he said, okay, go. So he allowed me for the first time and he followed me also as well. So he was there also watching. So I came in and I do my thing. And <laughs> it was just like, you know, it's not like the, how the football world is now. Yeah. So we won, we won the cup and I went back home then he sat me and I said, I see a lot of people said you are good in it and I also watch you play. Uh, we need to have. We need to come to an agreement. I want you to go to school. You can play your football if you have good grade in school. 
So that was just like the, I would say, like a bet between me and him. Yeah. So every time I'm in school, I have to pass to play football. So any time that I don't do so well in my grade, no football. So that's just the only... So as time goes on, then I started playing for the state. Then he started seeing that a lot of interest is coming into it, so he started buying me football shoes from his own salary, and that's how it goes for me. I love this son and dad <laughs> pact, you know? <laughs> Was there anyone else in the footballing world who identified your talent who thought, I need to nurture him a bit here? Yeah, I think uh, that was my coach. What was his name? Uh, Abdurazak Kolojo. Coach Kolojo, OK. Yeah, that was my coach. Uh, when I walked towards this uh, club, that this football academy that I was talking about, he was the coach then. And he has, like, a motorcycle. So every time, uh, sometimes, he would bring me in his motorcycle back home. So even with, with my dad, a bit skeptical, maybe yes, maybe no, he would still walk up to him and let him know, like, it's good then my brother as well, because he's someone into sport. So they try to convince uh, everyone, especially my parents, like, just let him do what he wants to do. Well, so you have a lot to thank to, to your siblings, number one. They're yeah. helping you, keeping an eye out. And yeah. then Coach Olojo, by the sound of it, are you still in contact with him? Always. <laughs> oh, Always. is he almost like a father figure for you? Then? Yeah, because I used to say, like, uh, he's my second dad. Then um, another person after my family, Coach Olojo, is uh, Mr. Sheyola Funjana. Former Wolves player. Yeah, Mr. Sheyola Funjana, because he gets to a point I have to leave uh, my state in Ilori to move to Impera Soccer Academy, which uh, it, was, it was owned by him and um, Banco, Mr. Bankoli Atiba. The Victor Bankoli Atiba also lives in England, and uh, Mr. Sheyola Funjana. So this. Three people are mainly the the which part of everything for me. I want to go to a point in your journey where it seemed like you got a glimpse of the future. There was a Coca-Cola tournament in yeah. Ibadan, right? Yeah. And your team won, and part of winning meant that you got a trip to London. Yeah. Talk me through what, what that meant coming to London and where you went. Yeah, for me, uh, it all started like uh, in, in this... Uh, in this academy, like I said, with this uh, lovely second second father for me, because I used to say it's like everyone knows it's like my second dad. Uh, my dad and my parents obviously move away from where we live in before. Uh, his place is called like Agboba and in Ilorin. so it's close to where the training pitch is. So my dad retired from being a prison officer, and from his pension money, he was able to build his own house. So we have to move far away from where the training pitch is. So I have to work every day through the training. So the first time they brought this Coca-Cola tournament like, uh, to, the, to the training and was in the stadium. So my coach ringing like, uh, you have to go there. I went there, they said we are small, that we are still like a small kid, that maybe the next edition. So it was a point where walking a bit was a bit tiring for me, to be honest. So sometimes you will be the one to give me the transport to go and come. So all of a sudden, you just see me not coming. So the next week, he called me, he rang me on the phone, he said, hey, I need you to be in training tomorrow because the Kokwa Kokwa tournament is, is starting. Don't worry about the transport, I will drive with my motorcycle and I will pick you at home. So he brought me to the training again and uh, from there I was picked. We went to Ibadan. It was a long story with the screening and everything because out of the 36 states in Nigeria, they have to speak uh, just 16 players. And I was uh, fortunate to be part of the 16. So we went to, to London in Chelsea. And uh, I think we, we came third in the tournament. And uh, I think I was uh, the most valuable player as a then. That, so we went back to, to Nigeria. I went back to him. as uh, But that was when my parents, everyone, see like, wow, something is actually starting. Baba, I got it. Leo, <laughs> 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 <
Boy, you want to come home? Ah, boy, you get gone. Oh, but don't be showy. Voila. No gun. That is. No gun. 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 No you continue academy I work towards it. You you to Dubai no. You know me. I do do. 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 So, double down, the the down, Minister you, governor, my you president, Let's <laughs> 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 You, you actually went back in the summer to lead a tournament, the Never Stop Dreaming tournament. Just give us a little indication about what that's about and why it's been so important for you to give back at home. Yeah, for me, uh, that's, uh, that's a huge part of me because, like I said, why I come about the tournament was just like, I'm just trying to do what we don't have privilege for. I'm just trying to create a legacy where if many Nigerian players have had the same opportunity, maybe it might be different for them. I believe there are a lot of Taiwo back home, there are a lot of Kelechi or Simen back home, but the truth is getting to the Premier League or getting to wherever they want to be as a football player takes a lot of work. And once you are there, the little that you've in, maybe through your joining and everything, just give it back to them. And that's what I'm trying to create with the, with the academy back home. And luckily for me, it's still controlled by the same person that nurtured me growing up. So I'm just trying to like brand it to how a football academy should look like. From what I understand, there are also some other challenges in terms of equipment. How, how accessible was football for you back then? For me, uh, it's really tough, to be honest. It's really tough when it comes to getting to the training ground because I just, from my parents' house to the training ground, it's one hour trek. So I have to walk every day to the training. That was dedication, you that, really wanted this. And I do it every day. Every, sometimes my dad, like, he will call me or my brother, they will say to me, I take this money. But me, for me, I know how difficult it is for the house as well. So I'll just be like, I won't even tell them when I'm leaving the house. I'll just pick my bag and I will just be going because I know they will want to push to give me the money. And maybe the money is what they will need to cook at home. And we are six, so I will just be like, no, don't worry, I'll just walk down. Then coming back, the coach will call me, how oh, today, come on my bike, I will drop you at home. Sometimes he will call me and say, take money, I will give you transport. And sometimes also, maybe he doesn't have money on, his, on him as well. I will just have to walk back also. So for me, at that point, doing those working, I'm just praying to my God, saying words that I believe in and hoping it comes to this level. Of course, my dad tried to do everything to send all of his children to school, which 
we are all very, very grateful to him. And uh, he did everything on his own capacity to buy me football shoes sometimes. But like I said, I know he's really, really pushing to do that. So I have to do some works by myself, like works in the bakery, works in the bricklayer shop, bricklayer like mode blocks for people, uh, fresh water for people just to get money. And this money, I'll keep on saving it myself. So when it comes, comes to the amount, or a certain amount, I will use it to buy a football shoes for myself. I know how difficult it is to buy football shoes. So every time the football shoe uh, gets torn apart, we'll call like a, we call it shoemaker. I'll give it to them to repair it for me, and I'm there looking at how they are doing it. So it gets to a point I can literally like shoe, make every shoe myself. Not like uh, trainers or something, but once your football shoes or your trainer, even your slippers is torn, you bring it to me, I can fix it. Wow. So uh, every time the fo the, my football shoe torn, I went to like uh, where they dump the, the refuge and all, these, all the dirty and stuff. Refuse and that, yeah. I look for where I just fear, found like some pairs. Sometimes I found like uh, my boot is Nike, I found like Puma and I remove it and I just fix it myself. And in Nigeria as well, they sell like, you know, the under, the, the, the stud, they sell like just the stud. I maybe find the canvas, I can put it on the stud and I will make it myself. So I was so good in it at one point, I don't even bother about, my friend also will say, oh, I will help us with this. They will pay me to do it for them. So I will use the money also to buy the new shoes. I always say to my, to my brother, one day I will be there watching football. Uh, you'll be, people will be watching me playing in the Premier League. And we used to go to where they show the football, and sometimes we don't even have money to go inside. So I would tell him, don't worry, one day they will watch us. So it was funny, but he would just keep on telling me, just keep on working. So when I signed for Liverpool, it was just like everything I wished for. Because at that point, I was working to the training ground. All my prayer was like, I only want to play in the Premier League. At that point, where we get to Chelsea, my only, because my dad, my parents, they said to me, once you get there, the God that will serve, just tell him what you wish for. And that was in 20, 2010, 2011. And my first prayer was like, I know there's a lot of clubs in England. If I'm going to sign for a football club, I want, to be, I want it to be in England. So the moment after the Under-17 World Cup, a couple of years later, like 2015, uh, Mr. Shea called me that Liverpool is interested. It was. At first, I don't even know how to express myself. The only person I called was my brother. I said to him, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want to jinx yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I said, don't say it to anybody. Even my dad, don't say it to anyone. He was the only one I called and I tell him. And he was like, and to be honest, he's not someone that can keep it that much. He was like, oh, no, I have to. I said, no, wait till it happens. So then you join for Liverpool doesn't quite start how you may have imagined. It is normal for young players to go out on loan, but for reasons due to a work permit, you couldn't be in the team. So what exactly was that about? Yeah, uh, for me, when I joined, like, like you said, to play in the Premier League as at that time, you need a work permit. And to, play in the work, to get the work permit to play, you need to play in the Super League of Nigeria. And as at that time, I've, not, I've just signed I'm, no, I'm nowhere near in the Super Ego. So uh, the only option for me was just to go out on loan. Every year I keep on going on loan, coming back, going on loan, coming back. But I always, one thing I always said to myself is, I've seen worse. I've worked miles to get to this level. I've made my own football shoes. I've done different kind of things. Now I've already signed a professional football contract. So the dream now is just to like, make it happen again and get yourself back to, to the Premier League. So every year I keep on going alone. And like I said, the only people that have been most supportive is just my family. Every day they keep reminding me, you work so hard to get to this place, just keep going. My coach in Ilori, Mr. Sheyolo Finjana. These three people are Mr. Bankoli Atiba as well. These people, they keep on, they are the only one. They are, that's why even now they are the only one that I keep close. It was actually seven loans in yeah. six years. Yeah. How do you mentally deal with that? For me, uh, thanks for to my, to my upbringing, to my background, uh, because growing up, they've always uh, make us believe 
God does everything at his own time. So they've always made us believe, believe in God and work towards it. It doesn't matter what people are saying. Believe so much in yourself, just keep going. There are sometimes we sleep without food. But this time around, it's not as if I'm not eating. It's not as if I didn't have some money in my pocket. It's just what I wish is not happening. And it's not as if it's not going to happen. Though it's tough, it's easier said than done. And those journey, to be honest, they really make me where I am today. So we get to 2021 after you've made what seems like another loan move. You get back to Liverpool and you have a decision to make. Yeah. Union Berlin comes knocking at your door and Jürgen Klopp advises you to maybe really consider the offer, no? Yeah. What was it that he said to you? Yeah, he just said for me, as at that time he said, the good thing about it is they're really doing everything to, to make you that. You've been on loan with them the yeah, previous season? Yeah, I've been on loan with them and he said they really do everything uh, to make you their player and this is very important for every football player. And that was what I said. And what a time you had there. You helped them get Europa League football for the first time since the early 2000s. And you did so well that a door that had come knocking a few years earlier came back, but in the form of Nottingham Forest, to finally bring you back to the Premier League. Tell me what that was like when you found out that Forest, who'd just been promoted back to the top flight, expressed interest in you. So for me, when my agent called me, like, Taiwo, you have to fly to Greece to meet the owner, I was very happy and I said to my brother, yeah, this is it, we're back in the Premier League. You were back in the Premier League and you scored Nottingham Forest's first goal back in the top flight for 23 years. What an occasion that must have been. But as is such the life of a footballer, you had ups and downs in your first season. There was a down period where you were out for just over three months or so. How did you manage that? Yeah, uh, for me, like I said, family is everything. Uh, because the good thing for me is at that time, my dad, my mom, they came over to the UK. So you can see now everyone is here now because I'm injured. <laughs> so because they know like every time you're down, it's not as if the strangers come from there. You need people around, you need people that will keep on motivating you like it will get better. And of course, if you believe so much in your dream, you just have to keep going, like I said earlier. That's just the truth about it. What a privilege is hand on, hands on deck from your family when you're injured. They all come in and they're helping you. Fast forward to this season, you had an incredible start picking up from where you left off scoring and you became the third African player to score in seven consecutive games after Emmanuel Adebayo and Mohamed Salah. Which players did you look up to from the African continent when you used to watch the Premier League way yeah. back when? Did I do that? Okay, <laughs> Job, not even any of the Nigerian players. Oh. <laughs> You're going to upset some people. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so because I believe they will understand as well. Every, everyone just uh, have the, the personality that they really look up to and watch their games a lot. And for me, it's the job. What are your hopes here at Nottingham? Yeah, for me, uh, I, I think like when we first came to the Premier League, like, everyone was like, oh, Nottingham Forest, they're going back down. But to be honest, this is a huge club, a very, very, very big club with a lot of history and most, part, most importantly with the, with, the, with the family that they, that they built, especially the fans. The City ground for me is one of the best ground in the Premier League. And I think uh, this is a ground like it's good for the Premier League, even for the fans, for the football world as well. And for me, like I said, my hope for Nottingham Forest is just to get back to where they belong, which is the top because this is the club that, that needs to, to be where everyone thinks they should be in terms of European football, and because this is how push this club is. And that's my hope for that. Well played. And one year, right place, right time. A tumultuous threat and cheers, it's heroes. Brilliant, so not only are we get the perspective of you coming to the Premier League, but a couple of people that know you very well. Tay, your wife, and Victor, your brother here. You know Tay from early days, right? From yeah. primary school. Yeah. From what I heard though, you you obviously didn't start dating until maybe middle school days. Yeah, uh, obviously we we in jest too. Then I just saw the beautiful lady walking into the class. Mm -hmm. Then <laughs> I have a friend of mine and I was like, that's going to be my wife. Oh. Just like that. And throughout from jest two to to finish at SS3, like 
who really close. Like I go to the school. Like sometimes I don't have food with me. I just go to a locker, take all our food and eat it. And she never get angry. She is always like, okay, it's Taiwo. So I would just be like, uh, she is my wife, and everyone would be like, Taiwo, just go out. She has been my my best friend since since then. So I went to the tournament and I came back and I look for her again. <laughs> And I ring her and I'm like, ah, yeah, it's Taiwo, I'm back from London. And she was like, so what? <laughs> <laughs> so it took some time again, then we really started dating after then. Back home then, maybe when someone traveled out, we were like, oh, this person is just coming from my abroad. Oh, 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 this is that. I was like, just call me. Hello, ah, this Taiwo. I'm just coming back from Chelsea. <laughs> So what? <laughs> What's this for? So, uh, no, you don't remember? Uh, of course I remember. Uh, I'm just coming back. I just play football, this, this, that. I said, uh-huh. What was all, what this all about? I was like, and I said, okay, it's fine. So everybody now, I hand the call, we part away then. I think we see some other time. And I just have a brief chat and it begins all day. Victor, we heard from Taiwo a little earlier on yeah. about how the two of you used to sneak in to watch games. So you didn't have cable at home. Where were you watching these games and how were you sneaking in? Yeah, there's a friend of mine that have a, a station like we watch football. We pay, people pay to watch the game. But we can't have access to, to the morning to watch the game. So we always call me, talk to your friend. We want to watch people, we want to watch the ball. I say, okay, don't worry. It's always demand the money. So let's try to sneak in. So he, he pulled out the tampoli, so we sneak in. I bend down, he leaned on my neck, and we start watching together. <laughs> so every time the guy calls us, he said, you guys, I'm going, I'm going to pour water on you guys. Get away from my TV station. <laughs> so it was funny. So that way we go to move. Every, 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 when everything is quiet, we go back again. Any time they show the match like that, that's the way we do it. <laughs> so Tay, you obviously stuck around there. Being a wife or a family member of a, a Premier League player comes with its ups and downs. There was an incident when he was in Germany, he suffered a concussion. Where were you at that time and how did you all live through that? In Mice, Germany. Hmm. <laughs> that was a great day. They are playing against Osborg, yeah. Osborg. You, you still I remember. Was, <laughs> I was at home, I was um, pregnant with my first, um, with Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. As I was watching Jimas, I just saw, saw him on the floor. I was like, what is this what's going on? I was, then I saw the referee putting his hand in his mouth. I was like, oh my God. It's not always been easy with in the, in the injury and everything, the up and down. Being a footballer wife is also a difficult moment for us. You know, we are down emotional when they are down. We are down spiritual when they are down. We are down physical when they are down. Even when everything is not going away, my husband will come inside the home. His eyes was up. Nobody can talk to yeah. him except his children. That was, that was, that was one of those to Nobody him. can talk to him except his children. His eyes will be up. Even if you say, I, mm, it's going. <laughs> everything. <laughs> he just wants to be on his own. And um, yeah, people because, back. Because for me, I've always felt like, uh, I always like to keep the the pain outside the pitch at the at the training gap because if I the, the pain I'm having if I come inside and there is no way you won't upset you won't add to it in one way or the other so I'll just come inside I will just be like the best is just be quiet just be on your own. <laughs>